Hello and welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel and this week we've got an update from the Renault and Fiat potential merger. We've got news from Ford, we've got Citroen celebrations and also we're going to tell you what car was sitting in last week. Hi, it's Andrew from Behind the Wheel and remember to check out the images and guess what car I'm in and put them in the comments box below. Meanwhile, let's have a look to see what happened with that massive potential merger between Fiat Group and Renault Group. Well, basically Fiat have pulled out because Renault is 15% owned by the French government and the French government insisted that they had voting rights on the Fiat board if the merger went ahead. Renault thought about it and decided that wasn't for them. They didn't want the French government having any say on their business. So the whole lot's collapsed. So back to the drawing board for mergers for either of those companies. So moving on to car safety, we all know how important it is to keep our tyre pressures to the, to the right levels. And only recently we had that tragic accident with Jose from Arsenal, uh, which cost him his life. So a question came to our mind, which was two things really. With most modern cars now knowing tyre pressure levels, should they also now almost have like a limp home mode if the car knows the tyre pressures aren't, aren't within a safe uh, levels? So what's your thoughts on that? Should manufacturers just take it that extra step? However, manufacturers aren't just stopping it's there. Evolution. It's our vision of the future of mobility. Um, at the moment we've got the American car company General Motors working with Michelin who have unveiled a new Euptis prototype which a tyre which eliminates the risk of flats and blowouts so that's sounding great. As well as improving safety the use of resin and aluminium fibreglass and minimal rubber to produce the tyres also reduces environmental unfriendly waste. Let's move on to more vehicle production news for the UK. So Ford have decided to close their factory in Bridgend in Wales um, because they're saying because of the contract with Jaguar Land Rover finishing for their engines in 2020 and also Ford are making a 10% saving on staff globally. So this will come at the cost of about 1,500 workers. I mean, obviously the question has to be asked. Jaguar Land Rover did decide to move their production or announce they're going to move their production to China. So it does make sense that why would you make an engine in the UK then ship it out to China and put it in a vehicle? So I'd suggest this decision has come from a ricochet effect. Ford have also said that it has absolutely nothing to do with that Brexit word um, and this is all to do with commercial decisions. So we all know that the VW Group got a little fine of £450 million not too long ago regarding what has been named as Dieselgate. And Volkswagen have made very little mention to this in any promotions, not too surprisingly, until now. largest car manufacturer under scrutiny as the emissions dissatisfied customers filing complaints against the German auto So they have bought out a ID all electric range and with the soundtrack of the sound of silence from Simon and Garfunkel, the ad brings their involvement in the global diesel emission scandal Hello, out. Darkness, so what do you reckon? Is that a good move from VW to at last start mentioning it? Or should they have just forgotten it and moved on? Many of us will be aware of how many collaborations there are in the, in the motor industry, particularly in the manufacturing side of it. So we've got Renault, Nissan and Mitsubishi working closely together. We know that BMW and Toyota work together very well. Uh, Ford and Mazda work together. Citroen and Peugeot do a lot of cross work as well. So it's not unusual. So this week, Jaguar Land Rover and BMW have paired up for working on the next generation of electric engines. And the good news doesn't stop there. This is happening in the Jaguar Land Rover plant in Wolverhampton. Center of operations for this project will still be in Munich. What's really interesting here is both Jaguar Land Rover and BMW already have successful electric cars and units. So what they're gonna pull together, working together, should be really interesting and push electric engines forward significantly. 
Jaguar, Land Rover and BMW aren't the only ones working together. Uh, Toyota and Subaru are also getting together, uh, combining the next generation of battery electric vehicles. These two Japanese manufacturers are collaborating to build a new battery electric vehicle platform, as well as a brand new BEV BEV utility vehicle, which they will both sell under their own brands. If you know someone or you have a baby who is called Andre, Andrew or Andrea, then now is the time to listen up. Citroen are looking for babies with those names who which were born between the 1st and 7th of June 2019. And if you have a baby or you know someone's got a baby who was born during that period, Citroen are going to give you a brand new Citroen C3's Origins Collector's Edition vehicle. If there's more than one baby declared, then it's going to go to a draw. Now, Citroen have done really well with the C3 model over the last two and a half years, and they're telling us they've actually sold 600,000 across Europe. Not only that, the C3 is the fourth best-selling model in its class across the whole of Europe. So what car was I sitting in last week? I was sitting in the brand new Mercedes B-Class. So congratulations to Sylvie Pasco who got there first on that one. And remember to check out the images of what car I'm sitting in at the moment. There's a little clue as you're directly looking at me, but let's be more specific than that brand. Um, so please put your thoughts and comments in the comments box below. Uh, meanwhile, if you've enjoyed the show, then please share, ring the bell, tell your friends about it. And until next week, safe driving.